Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a rotary switch to use one input on an Arduino, so let's go. So for those of you who use quite a large amount of switches in your projects, you would know that each switch takes up one of those digital pins in the Arduino, which is quite frustrating when you're starting to run out of pins and you still have more things you wanna connect up to it. Now, this becomes quite frustrating when you're using a rotary switch, which may have from five all the way up to 12 different pins that come off the one rotary switch because you have to use a single pin going into your Arduino, which takes up quite a bit when you start to use some of the bigger rotary switches. So what I have here is a wiring diagram of a rotary switch, which has the five volts connected to a resistor and then connected up to each one of those lines that goes in to the Arduino pins. So you can imagine if you're using a Arduino Uno, which doesn't have a whole lot of pins compared to like an Arduino Mega, if you're using a 12 pin rotary switch, then there's 12 digital pins that have disappeared just for that one rotary switch. And you could be using multiple rotary switches in one of your projects. I did one project where I was actually using four rotary switches that were all 12 pins each. So that's 48 pins just for rotary switches. So as a result, this is what we're going to do instead. So this is a five position rotary switch, which you can use the same logic when it comes to a 12 pin rotary switch, a uh, 24 position rotary switch, whatever you wanna do, it just adds on and just multiplies as you go through each of the resistors. You just keep adding them. But what we're going to have is the five volts at the top connected to the first position. We then have a resistor bridged between that first position to the second position. And we continue to bridge these resistors across each of the positions all the way to the last, and then you would have your ground. Off the selector pin on the rotary switch, we then have a capacitor which is connected up to the ground as well. We then have a resistor which connects from that same selector pin to the analog input which goes to the Arduino. So here's a wiring diagram that I've created to show you how that would be wired up. As you can see, the five volts goes the top there. The ground goes down to those bottom two components. And then we've got the analog input which will go into one of the analog in on the Arduino. Now, any of them will be fine as long as you uh, basically account for that in the code so it knows which pin it's reading. In one of my projects, I actually had four of these rotary switches set up, so that took up four of the analog pins. I just had to make sure I knew which one was gonna connect to what. Just wanna point out that it's saying there that between R1 to R4, those resistors, saying to go between two and five K ohm. Now, in my example, I ended up going with the one K ohm resistors. These were a quarter watt resistor. Um, now, the reason I chose those is because I was having more, I was having those 12 pins, not just four. Now, you can go lower than that. It's probably not too bad. The only thing is, is that the more and more you go down in resistance, the closer tolerance you have between um, potentially getting an error of it saying that potentially it thinks it's on position two where it could be actually on position three because the resistance levels are so close, which you'll see in the code a bit later on. But if you're gonna do something similar to this project, I wouldn't be going too much lower than one K ohm. Um, and alternatively on the other side, I probably wouldn't wanna be going past the 10 K as you start to becoming a very wide range of the resistance uh, for the Arduino to pick up. So. So I've set up the wiring diagram uh, just on this breadboard without the actual switches. You can see I've got the five volt rail, the ground, my signal pin, and then the five volts. Now I've got all the resistors set up all basically in series, and I'll explain through how this is wired up compared to the actual wiring diagram. All right, so here's the wiring diagram. First, we're gonna look at the five volt rail, which you can see here is connected up from the five volt to that first resistor. We have our earth that's connected up to the last resistor and also to the capacitor. And then last off, we have that analog input wire, 
which is also teed onto one half of the capacitor. And then the other piece is going into the analog input. Now I don't have that 100 ohm resistor uh, before it goes into the analog input, but it doesn't really matter too much because it's going to give whatever the resistance is overall. And being that I don't really care if it's between zero to the first resistance value, um, I don't really care too much. But if you wanted to, you could add it in there. It's just going to reflect in your values uh, later on in the code, uh, which you'll probably see a bit later on. But in this case, we don't actually have the rotary switch to toggle between each um, leg. So what we're going to do is use that blue wire and actually plug it into each of the legs of where the resistor connects up to and it'll act like our little switch clicking between. So what will end up happening and what the Arduino will see is that every time we click between each of those resistors, the resistance value will change. So if we say, for example, at the front end where the five volts are, we only have the, let's say in this example, 1K ohm of resistance. When we move it to the second one, we have 2K and then so on, so forth, 3, 4, 5K, all the way up to 12K if there was a 12 uh, pin rotary switch in my case. And what we're then seeing on the Arduino is that, okay, it's now at 1K, 2K, 3, um, all the way up. So being that I don't have that 100 ohm resistor in there, what my first value will be when it's sitting at the start of uh, the first pin will actually be zero. There won't be anything there. So it's, it's basically putting five volts direct into that analog pin, which Arduino uh, are able to actually take that five volt input but it does go up to 5.5 before it can uh, damage the Arduino. So uh, that's why they kind of say to put that resistor in as well, just to add something in there. One thing I just want to clarify though, is that the analog input, it doesn't read the voltage, it doesn't read resistance. What it does is it actually has the analog read, which is a range. Now that range is between zero to, to 1023. Now that's important a bit later on because we're going to look at in that range where it's going to give us these values and that's where we'll kind of assign the pins to which I'll show a bit later on when we get to the code. But it's just important to note that it's not voltage it's reading and it's not resistance it's reading. It's giving this um, value between 0 and 1023. So here's my 12 pin rotary switch. You can see there in the middle, we've got that selector pin uh, that will actually run to that, uh, for example, that blue wire, which runs into the analog input into the Arduino and the rest of them are our selections. So uh, where the actual selector is gonna be, uh, we'll have where that voltage is going to connect up to and run through with those resistors. So let's get to actually soldering it all up. But first, uh, I found it easier to actually bend the pins out and flatten them out. Um, not the center pin, but just those ones on the outside. Only because we're uh, soldering up resistors to them, uh, made it a bit easier to flatten them out and then connect the resistors in between each of those pins, as you'll see in a minute. So I solder the first resistor between the first and second pin. And once I've done that, I just trim off the excess of the resistor. And then I continue the process and do every resistor between the one all the way to 12. I make sure not to do a connection between one and 12. And then basically it looks like this. Now they're all the same resistors. Um, and then next thing we look at is the capacitor, which one side can join to that selector pin and the other can join to the pin 12. And then we connect up the positive wire, the selector wire, and then the ground wire. So that green one going up to the analog input. Now I've put them side by side so you can see the wiring diagram from earlier on compared to how it actually looks uh, now. And 
the wiring of that same wiring diagram, it's built exactly the same. All right, so now looking at the code, the code is actually very simple. We've got the first line that's saying sensor pin is equal to A0 because it's looking at that analog pin zero. And then we're setting uh, integer sensor value is equal to zero because that's uh, basically our value it's gonna hold. So whatever it detects between that range of zero to 1023, it's just going to hold that value in there. And then in the void setup, we've got basically just to allow for our serial monitor. And then in the loop, it's just reading the value. So it's saying the sensor value is equal to analog read and then the pin it's selecting and then it's just printing it into the serial monitor. Now, as you can see, it's jumping between the 100, 200, 300, and it's going up through each of the ranges. Now that's directly correlated to when I was showing it set up on the breadboard. This was the code that it was actually showing. So as you can see, it's jumping up in that 100 interval every time I jump between each of those resistors. So if you can imagine that I was clicking between each of the rotary uh, switch pins, we'd be getting an extra 100 every time it was clicking along. And as you can see there, it's hit our maximum value of 1,023, uh, and that's as high as it will go. I also want to note that you can see with the readings, it's not always exact. It's not, all right, it's on this, clicked onto this one, it's exactly 750, that's it. It actually does fluctuate a few uh, points or figures between where it would normally sit. So if it's 750, as you can see there, it goes to 748 and it can go up up to 753. So you just have to keep that in mind when you're doing your code, if you want it to trigger from something. Now, as an example, I've created this piece of code, which does the exact same thing as before. The only difference is, is that I have a, another integer there that says rotary switch number is equal to zero. Now this is just basically going to read out what rotary switch number are we at? But if I've got a 12 pin rotary switch, then there's going to be one to 12, and that's just assigned in the code, which as we go down through it, you can see it's looking at that same analog sensor pin value, whatever's coming through. And all I've got there is a couple things to say for the printing to the serial monitor so that we can see what the value and also what switch it's actually in or what switch position. After that, I've just got this crude bit of code that just looks at it and says, if the sensor value is less than 20, then it's saying that the rotary switch number is one. Else, it's saying if it's between that 80 to 120, because we're leaving a little bit of room for that fluctuation, even though the fluctuation might only be five digits out, um, I'm giving it that little bit extra uh, to give it that little bit of room just in case because we don't want to switch it between and it just misses outside and thinks it's another switch number. Um, so basically, then it's saying I'm rotary switch number two. Now between the next set of values, it's saying rotary switch three and so on, so forth, all the way through um, for all of those 12 positions. In this code, I only went up to the 10 switches because it was for that breadboard setup. So as you can see, I've got the 10 resistors. So as I clunk through each of them, it will give us uh, up to the switch number all the way up to number 10. It all comes down to how many switch positions you have and the resistance you just have to, as you read through and while you're testing, you can go, okay, I've got it set on switch number three and you know what the range is for switch number three and that's what you would add in the code. So for switch number three, you might say it's between uh, 190 to 210 and that's what you would assign in the code. So it's looking in between that range. And that's basically all you need to do. So, you know, once it was done, that rotary switch, uh, it actually looked a lot neater. We have three wires going to it and that was it. So you, your positive, negative and your signal going back to the Arduino. So for that Arduino Mega there, 
uh, I could have 15 of those connected up to it. Now you can imagine how many uh, pins that would have taken up on the digital side if we were to do it uh, via the digital way. Even for one of my projects, I ended up basically putting it inside this little box, which you can see fit nice and neat in there. Um, and I then created a, a whole bunch of things and, and had all this inside the box. And at the same time, it all still ran out to just this Arduino, uh, which I used the Nano. And you can see for all four of those boxes, um, they only needed to have one analog uh, pin and then one positive, one negative, and then a digital for another device. But, you know, look at how much room was taken up for all four of those boxes. Uh, very little compared to the amount of wires you would have using the digital method. So I hope this worked for you. And also, if it helped, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so that you can see similar projects to this. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.